So next we have another keynote coming in uh, on thriving in e-commerce e with intelligence experiences and for this uh, we have Mr. Pedro Pereira who is the digital transformation and innovation leader at SAP EMEA South and uh, he also happens to be on the advisory board member uh, of uh, BShare project which works uh, on AI and blockchain and here uh, this project is trying to actually make a difference in people's lives. Uh, so over to you, Mr. Pedro. Good morning, everyone. Still energy in the room? Great. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And um, you know, while preparing for talking to you today, I've been thinking, you know, how best I can start this by addressing what is the expectation from e-commerce? And I was trying to figure out how I can communicate that. And I have this video for us to learn this. This is Bob Reed from X-Men. So he's coming around. And Professor X is telling him where to go. Just like our consumers trying to shop, isn't it? Where they should go? And to guide him, Professor X is using telepathy. that he comes to the right place at the right time that Professor X was expecting. So for those of you in the room that are a little bit older, maybe you will understand the analogy from another example, Star Trek. So who is familiar with Star Trek? The mind meld technique from the Vulcan, right? My thoughts to your thoughts, my mind to your mind. So I was expecting to have more younger people in the room, so perhaps that will resonate a little bit better. And I brought those analogies because I believe that this is the expectation today on e-commerce, right? Personalization, omni-channel, you should know me, you should do something for me that is personalized, special for me, isn't it? Sounds like we need to have telepathy techniques in our platform in order to address those expectations, isn't it? So, Today, what I have in mind is to talk about all the ways that we can reach to a up, ultimate level of experience. And before we deep dive on this, I've been thinking deeply, so what is shopping is all about? And for me, shopping is about decision making. It's about getting to yes. Who agree with that? Show of hands. So the winners are the ones who get to yes. And there is a journey from, you know, undecision to decision. And that's what we're going to explore today. Linear journeys, they don't reflect today's shopping expectations. Sometimes we plan that, you know, our consumers, they will go through that journey and therefore they will lend to us in happy days. Isn't it? Not really. So the touch points and the way consumers and users they go through in order to achieve to the level that they need of comfort, that sentiment that they need, that they have enough information, the fear of missing out is going away and they are now ready to make the decision. It goes in so many different ways that we cannot even predict. However, we can pull those touch points and having one single view of the customer the visibility at an individual level, how that works. And we've been doing that with big brands. Take Nestle, for instance. Um, I represent a company called SAP. And SAP is a very large company that is doing things with very large organizations. And they have big challenges. Imagine having a single view of customer in the case of Nestle. Anybody from Nestle in the room? So you would be surprised to see how big is that challenge. And at an aggregated level, there is a golden path. Imagine that all those unique experiences, unique touch points, they come to a way that you see which channel works best, what I'm doing and how people are reacting to that. So for us, it's about learning and understanding all the way and not considering that one linear 
journey is the solution for everything. But the ability to absorb and react to all those experiences in real time. There is no better example than the gaming industry. Imagine you're doing online sales in the gaming industry. So we are using our platforms here in order to pull information from gaming experience, understand how a gamer that is there pouring a lot of information all the time and getting that information to personalize the game experience to that specific person. There is no worse challenge than that in order to personalize experiences. And that very same ability is what we do with marketplaces like eBay. Imagine how you can correlate information coming from the sellers and the buyers of this entire network. How you use that information in order to personalize and bring the best offer to the best person at scale. This is where we are coming from as SAP. These are the brands we've been helping and this is how we've been learning and my intention is to share some of those learnings with you today. So far so good? Are you with me? Right. So there are three things that I want to address that e-commerce means to us. First, e-commerce is about inspire. How we can inspire our consumers mm -hmm. to connect to us and move from undecided to decided. Secondly, it's about fulfill. Fulfill expectations. You know, consumers, they expect nothing less than a great experience. And what differentiates everybody, actually, in this e-commerce space now, is not like the features. It's about how you fulfill experiences. And finally, e-commerce is about how we make people live at their best. So, live at our best is what an e-commerce provider needs to aspire. So therefore you have the trust, you have the loyalty, they will come back to you, they will rely on you for a much better lifestyle. And that requires trust and value. If there is one constant for us in the e-commerce space is trust and value. We need to be experts in doing this and never fail. Because if we fail, it means out of business. Good? Let's deep dive on this. From undecided to decided, how we can inspire. Here I have a concept. Who have heard of digital twins before? Show of hands. Oh, not many of you in the room. A digital twin is a virtual representation of our consumers. Basically, you as a person in the real world, you have preferences. You have your desires, your expectations. What if we create a virtual representation of you and do simulation around that amount of information for you in order to give the best experience to you. Think of developing an avatar in fashion, for instance, now that I have a virtual dressing coming all the way to me. So we acknowledge that experiences start at home. So look at this guy here, he needs a suit and he's going online, Facebook and all those things, and he's trying to get information about what he needs. But he goes to the shop, and the same person that was doing online shopping is the person that is there at the shop. And the information and the experience is all handled in a seamless way. The same way here, we can help the women in the room. Imagine, for you to find a bra everywhere you go, you need to kind of try and figure out, okay. I'm not a woman, but I would love that, you know, someone will have the size and then I go there and making my life easy. This is what we're doing in Turkey with Fenty. So they're basically understanding their consumers. And when you go to the shop, you have a much more personalized experience. But what about taking it to the next level and using 3D printing? So I measure your body. This is what we are doing with Adidas. And then you go and personalize the product that you're looking for. Isn't it something that would inspire consumers to get something very unique for them at the point of sale using 3D printing? Those capabilities are helping us to inspire customers and bring things in a more personalized way. Take virtual reality for instance. What if I have an experience with virtual reality to find a shoe? like I just do the experimentation of that shoe using my phone. Would that inspire you to find what's the best shoe 
you can start that journey at home or you don't need, need, don't need to go to the store at all. You just find it, you try it and you order it online. Would that make it easy for that journey from undecided to decided happen? What do you think? We love entrepreneurs at SAP and Jackie, she's one of the entrepreneurs we've been working with. She created a brilliant algorithm that you take a picture of your feet and that picture creates a 3D model of your feet. And based on that 3D model of your feet, it gives a recommendation of the shoes that are perfect fit for you. It's fantastic. But while you do this, you need to fulfill that by delivering the shoe at your best convenience. So the technology helps to inspire, but the fulfillment of that is seamless. So you need a platform that can do that end to end. And like I said, a digital twin is a virtual representation of you. And for you to have that level of trust, you need to deal with the identity. Sometimes we have multiple identities online. But whatever you are doing, whatever you are doing, you need the consent. You need to build that profile of your users. And you need a platform that helps you to do that. Progressively building identity. This is where winners of the future will come. So that you can come from a user, an individual that are anonymous to you, and they trust you and they share information with you and you handle that information properly and they are known and you can do relationship with them. In summary, it's give cons customers visibility and control over their data and how they are used. This is what we expect as consumers and you need a platform that helps you to bring all of that together. Make sense so far? So think of this, if you have all this trust, all this information in place and you start applying this throughout the entire journey, you go to a mall, everywhere you go, that information, that trust is there with you. So an app or whatever you are using to make that interface is helping the individual to be at his best or her best. And this is what we have done here with Unibank. You can talk to the team outside for more details on those cases. But this is a end-to-end -end journey that starts and ends with trust. Now if you're marketing in the room, you have so many challenges. But think of addressing your challenges from the point of the interaction, regardless what is that interaction, having a 360 view of your customer with that digital twin, the virtual representation of your customer, and then you enrich and you predict, you have the lookalikes, so you do things like Amazon, Netflix, everybody's doing using technology that is available today for you, not only for them. And then you can target People, you take in target groups and you can orchestrate experiences in a much better way. So if you're in marketing in the room, all of this is possible and is available. And now we talk about fulfill. We inspired our users, our consumers. Now we need to take it to the next level. And for that, it takes an intelligent enterprise that thinks end to end to do this. An intelligent enterprise starts from a combination of the front office and the back office. Those are not different things. In the past, maybe, because you think of the front office as the user experience that gets you to the sale. But to deliver that, you need to integrate with the back office. Take, for instance, Complet Group. They are from Norway, and they wanted to start penetrating the grocery market. Great, they created a website, a e-commerce, but didn't stop there. What about delivery? What about fulfillment? What about transportation of the goods? So that experience that started great online needed to end with the fulfillment that required an entire supply chain system connected to that. This is what the power of integrating a front office and back office can be. So you can achieve expectations and penetrate new markets. But it doesn't stop there. Now you need to open up for more data, for more innovation. So what if we have a platform that helps you to connect all those business processes with great interfaces? This is what you're doing with Apple, with iOS integration. Burberry and SAP have been working on apps where you have an amazing experience in store, everywhere you go, but it's all connected to the supply chain of Burberry. This is a platform that's open for innovation. 
And finally, we've been talking about Inspire. And intelligent enterprise is also embracing intelligent technologies. For instance, Pandora. You go to Pandora, you can do your entire shopping experience using chatbots. And chatbots, they leverage machine learning, artificial intelligence. You talk to the chatbot, and what happens? The chatbot reacts to you. The chatbot takes you where you should go. The chatbot gives you recommendation. All those new technologies help integrating with the overall commerce platform. And it's also possible to do that using machine learning with computer vision. This is what we are doing with Daimler. So you go on the streets of Dubai, you find the car of your dream, you take a picture. From that picture, it recognizes what's the model of that car. And immediately, it takes you to the Mercedes-Benz dealer. And now you can personalize that specific car that you really like on the street. So the technology of computer vision and image classification being part of your commerce and marketing platform makes you so much more powerful to achieve your goals and inspire your customers and fulfill the expectations of your customers. You need a platform that embraces those emerging technologies. So far so good? So at the end of the day, an intelligent enterprise helps you to ingest data and data is the key for us to go to the next level. Is smartify the data because data alone doesn't do anything. But also, a smart data without the right process also doesn't have any meaning. So when you take a picture and you connect that picture to your inventory, you are connecting your business process all the way to a smart data that's coming from that picture. And then you achieve the business outcome. So all this technology, all the intelligent enterprise exists for us to achieve a business outcome. And what is next? You just do it again. You start again with more data, with more intelligence. And that's the digital mile. We call that the digital mile. From the raw data that you have access all the way to the business outcome. This is the digital mile that sometimes is hard for us to walk, isn't it? So, when you think of all those capabilities at scale, we've been helping Walmart. And Walmart here, they created a prototype at the scale of Walmart is huge. The Walmart Data Cafe. Who have heard of the Data Cafe in Walmart? We're talking about 245 million customers, 11,000 stores across 27 countries. This is Walmart. And just for a prototype, they're talking about 1.5 thousand users, 20 million rows. Right? This is a lot of data. And what they can do with that data? On Black Friday, they can run a campaign that takes information from the East Coast. And they learn from what happened in the East Coast. So that when the West Coast is up, they already adapted from the learnings on that Black Friday all the way to the West Coast. So this is adapting pretty much in real time. Something that happens in one part of the world can affect the experience in the other side of the world. Make sense to you? So the final part of it is about helping our consumers to live at their best. And this is what we expect. So having a commerce platform that you know, helps you to deliver with the key principles of a good service, personalization, attention to details, easy to use, this is all available, this is all possible. We've been very proud that SAP has been helping so many e-commerces out there with all those capabilities that are end-to-end. -end. But that's not enough. This is what we are doing for a living for a long time. We want to take it to the next level. And how we do that? We need to be great at listening, at understanding our customers. We need to be great at taking feedback, at taking experience data at the point of the experience not like you know one question after the shopping at the point of the touch point of the experience you collect that the right question at the right time to the right user and you merge that with your operational data I've been talking about fulfillment this is operational data so things like you know high unsubscribe rate uh, on email predictions. So you ask, why have you not been you know, in the subscription? And you connect that to 
you know, information on your e-commerce chart and uh, the, 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 the cart and everything. So that connectivity gives you control of the experience so you can improve. And it doesn't stop there. Experience is not only for your consumers. Experience goes beyond and also for the employees. So to see what we're doing with Volkswagen. In Volkswagen, we are using experience data from the employees so that they give us an understanding of how they experience their employment, their job, so that now we can improve the customer experience. So experience management doesn't stop with your customer. And what we're talking about here in experience management is the ability for you to use software to turn customers into fanatics, products into obsessions, employees into ambassadors, and brands into religions. Would that work for you? Would that be something that would help your e-commerce strategy? And my final word for you, we have a set of capabilities that can help you, right? So we have a big team here today, show of hands guys. They are here just to talk to you and explain how we can help you with marketing, how we can help you with commerce, with customer data, with sales, with service. All of this under one umbrella that brings experience information and connect with operational information. This is what helps you to inspire, to fulfill expectations, and also to help your users to live at their best. And finally, if you are doing your strategies, remember, it's important to think of the profit. But today, consumers, us, we don't react only to profit. We react to purpose. So that's the win-win for the world that we see, and this is what we stand for at SAP. And with that, I thank you very much for your time today.